Welcome to Phil and Ted's Sexy Boomer Show. I'm Ted Bonnet. I'm Phil Proctor, and my God, we just got in here under our our lovely producer Donna. Uh, we're giving her a heart attack. You know that. Ted. Well, that's the magic of radio. See, the secret, the, the thing is, folks, we have a, a breakfast with our guests before each show, so that we can kind of, you know, get, get everything going. You know, get everybody lubricious. Yeah, get it right. And and so we we had we run over from the good neighbor restaurant into our spacious studio here and our specious studio yes this is our guest shadow stevens it's a re- it's a repeat folks uh, you know it's not a repeat show it's not a him new again. show Good yeah, with, Lord. with a repeat guy yes right <laughs> shadow stevens who will never repeat himself because never. he's moving forward all the time Always. and we're going to talk in fact about uh the next manifestation of mental radio yes but who is shadow stevens mm. he was a 11 year old boy from North Dakota who just loved radio. Yep. Yeah, I was swept away <laughs> out there with the cattle and the wheat on the folks that can't be beat. On the wind. Sure. And then he came to L.A. and changed oh. the history of radio and uh, has been rewarded as such. You are now an, an inductee into the Radio Hall of Fame. Mm. And, that was a great moment. You know, and you started K-Rock. I mean, yeah. we, we got a lot to talk about. But oh, boy. Your history in radio is so fundamentally influential and what you did to uh, create the halcyon days of FM, when FM was wild and uh, unexplored. And unpaid. And unpaid. And unpaid, (laughs) thank you. Let's let's bring reality into it. Yeah, but that's what made, you know, I I made a living not getting paid in radio. Yeah. Because um, (laughs) one of the things that I found when I did, did stuff at radio, mostly comedy, was they didn't pay me. But then as a result, they didn't. They couldn't tell me what to say or not say. Good point. And that was a huge, huge advantage. Freedom. That's why we've made Pacifica our career. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Poverty, pay. God's work. Poverty pays. Poverty pays. <laughs> that's for sure. You're still at it with this uh, concept called mentalradio.net. Does that have anything with Upton Sinclair's novel from 1930? Uh, it's, it's part of it. When I started it, it was um, creating a whole mythology. And the mythology is like all conspiracy theories. It's all based on truth, but truth slightly tilted and exaggerated. And so you don't know which part is true. Like What is reality? What is reality, in fact? And so it goes back to Tesla, 1893, with uh, wireless energy transfer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what he discovered was that he could power the entire world with a singular kind of technology. But he also realized, and what you don't know and you don't hear him talk about, is that it transcended the physical world because all things are vibration. Mm-hmm. And yes. therein, he's able to influence behavior and the mind. And he realized mm-hmm. this was so controversial in 1893, he could never go public. So he started a secret organization of optimisticals. And he drew in people like mm-hmm. Salvador Dali and, um, and Douglas Fairbanks Sr. and well-known people Mm. at the time. Albert Einstein became part of it. I've heard of him, yeah. And it was, they would be there at key moments in history, like uh, Roosevelt didn't really say, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself, Mm -hmm. it came from one of us. Mm. Really? Yes. And, and and Norman Sinclair was part of it as well. Uh, An Illuminati? Yeah, was this a hush-hush organization? (laughs) Apparently. But Why? To raise the vibration of the world, a one thought at a time. To... Change all life as we know it for the better. To be there to make sure the world doesn't destroy itself, there are those among us. And then mm-hmm. they find out that they go back to a Shiva temple in India, and in the catacombs deep below, found um, um, a tape tablets. recorder. No. No, not tape recorders, not then. (laughs) I laugh in your general direction. (laughs) No, in fact, they found (laughs) scrolls. And these ancient scrolls written in Tamil reveal that there have been optimisticals among us since the beginning of time. Look it up. Beautiful. I saw that call to action on your website, and I did look it up, and I couldn't find anything. Ah, you did. You found wireless energy transfer, I am sure. Well, I did do that. Okay, now you know the secret behind the scenes. And those scrolls were kind of like the early Edison cylinders. Isn't that interesting? Very much, yes. Edison knew about the scrolls, and therein created the cylinders in uh their likeness. Isn't that wow. interesting? It's so true. I, I yeah. bet. Uh, too true to believe, too true to be true. You be yeah. the mm-hmm. judge. Initially, then the dark forces 
took over, obviously, and snuffed it, and this became top forty radio. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then yeah, and then high priests, <laughs> high priests of the darkness, like Lee Abrams, came in and homogenized yes. all the markets. Yes, yes, the homogenization happened and and destroyed what was a really good idea at the time. But somehow. Somehow you have broken through this and created something called mental radio. Yeah. So what do you got going? You heard about the giant lizards and goats? Yeah, taking over cities. I uh, got a blood hornet, size of a bat. Got him down in Argentina, mm. doing a little ransom. The size of a bat? He got it here? Yeah, it's out in the truck. I followed him outside Whalen's kit and caboodle past the dumpsters to Malone's indigo blue custom lowered 1950 Chevy 350 fuel injected pickup with flames on the hood and just the right amount of pinstripes. And there it was on the real camel-colored leather seats, a bell jar so big it took two hands to pick it up. Fins, teeth, and stingers. Stingers? Like more than one? Three rows of teeth. Look in there. <laughs> and lots of stingers. He dropped the jar. I looked on at the hornet shark with its bat wings flapping and saliva coming out of three sets of teeth and it opened its jaws and flew at my face. And suddenly I left my body and I could see what was happening in slow motion. I could see it for what it was without being afraid. And I thought, wait a minute, it's not like it's a rhinoceros. They're big and they run. I could see it coming at me and it wasn't a shark and it wasn't a bee. It was a freak and it was the size of a bat. So I smashed it with my fist. And it was stunned, stopped in the air, confused. And it fell to the ground with a thud. And I stomped it with my foot. And I felt good. <laughs> <laughs> and so do we. Yeah. That, made, that made me feel good. This is an excerpt from mentalradio.net. Your history in radio, going back to some of the greatest radio in L.A. And here, all these decades later... You're still at it, and you're doing something way out there. It's fire sign esque. It's, it's surrealism. You embrace surealism, and in in our heads, very much is the best place to put it. Fire sign theater Absolutely. is why I adore you and and grovel at your well, feet. Oh, that's very sweet. Well, get up, please. Come on, <laughs> no, get, please, please. Yeah, the, it's, the, it's it's in my culture. Let's move that microphone up it's a little touch bit. for you there. You know? Yeah, no, but it's true, and it's very it's very uh, inspiring to hear. Because many people have tried to create uh, the kind of surrealism that we did, but we had. Terrific production values available mm -hmm. to us yeah. at the time. And you are doing this from your own home, yeah. basically? Yeah, I do all the production and, and all of the writing. And It's and, astonishing. Uh, I'm so impressed. Do you have any time to do anything else? Uh, <laughs> well, it, well, for the time, the three years that I've been doing this, there's now 26 episodes. So there's like 12 hours of stories and lots of variety and a lot of different things that are catching on there's up to 300,000 downloads now so it's wow. kind of oh, yeah. cool tune in folks you'll love it so this is mentalradio.net you can get the free app on on both uh, apple and google play and you just look up mental radio as one word you'll see it the the logo is a is a light bulb with people running across the light bulb from one clip to another Kind of this is very visual audio, if you will, and mm -hmm. but you're also a visual artist as visceral well. Visceral audio, too. Some of your artwork, to me, looks like Escher, you know, just very yeah. conceptual well, thank you. work. It's interesting, when you've done something for so many years and so many decades, you get to this level of mastery where you can really expand into some highfalutin consciousness and highfalutin there's a word that i love you know mm. every time i and i carry notebooks with me all the time you can see that i've got one yeah. right here <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like i hear a word and go i haven't used that yet highfalutin is you, you get you get gobsmacked by words gobsmacked right? exactly with flutter and tilt and you know <laughs> mentalradio.net in a nutshell as prosaically as possible can you explain what this is i started mental radio because it was it was March 1st of 2020. I knew that we were going to be shut down and people were going to freak out and it seemed like the end of the world. And I thought, I've got to write something f funny and uplifting. And what would that be? And I started by writing the mythology and then the mindset of optimism. Optimism, in the, it's like Victor uh, uh, Frankl, um, tragic optimism. Mm -hmm. You know, optimism Victor in the Frankl. face of all evidence to the contrary. We have no choice. We have to mm -hmm. be able to nurture an optimistic point of view and a positive kind of goal-oriented 
work. He also said to survive. Victor to Frankl survive. wrote about the Holocaust and yeah, how people in, survived. in a concentration camp on scraps of paper that went on for four years, and then he wrote the whole book in nine mm-hmm. days. It's remarkable, and he said, man is not meant to find equilibrium. Man is at his best when he's struggling and striving toward a freely chosen goal. And it's up to each of us to find that goal, and these goals change, but you must find a goal. It and will you keep must you alive. It. it will it keep will you alive. Justify your and, existence. And very timely today, the situation politically, socially here in America it's perilous. is very perilous, and that's just here. I mean, yes. it's much worse in other areas of the, of the world. It's why people are flocking here from every country mm. imaginable. That's why we're so flocked up right now. Oh, yeah. nicely put. Yeah. You are yeah. good. You <laughs> haven't <laughs> lost any no, of I'm your bad. I'm up momentum. I'm bad. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> so this is... <laughs> that would be a definition of what you call mental radio, genetically altered humor. Yeah, well, Ooh. it's it's humor that because it goes fast and doesn't give you time to laugh, you get, um, uh, there is a, a quality that happens that is uh, laughter buildup. And um, you may laugh later for no reason and wonder why. And this is what we call a laugh back. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Don't forget the world is ending. Don't forget to be afraid. Don't forget to keep pretending you got it made. Your best years are behind you, so sit alone in your room. Watch a little TV and wait for impending doom. Watch a little TV. Now to try to be happy, be happy. In the mental radio. Tiny <laughs> Tim. That's the uh, Tiny Tim and Ian Whitcomb and oh, we're doing a new spirit. version of that for for the um, for the theater that is um, for the, the theater. The, yeah, that so, will you explain so you, yourself? What, yeah. what do you mean for the theater? Well, as it turns out, Speaking. about eight months ago, um, Gil Smith, who is the uh, president of the Montalban Theater, which is a wonderful theater near Hollywood and Vine, the Montalban Theater, and uh, it's like a nearly a thousand seat theater, uh, all completely restored. Used beautiful. to be the Henry Fonda at one point. It was, right? and he called me and he said one of the things that got me through COVID, sitting alone in my house, was listening to metal radio on earphones at night and feel and laughing and feeling uplifted. What do you think about doing it as live theater? Wow. Right? It's the greatest idea I ever heard in my life. I don't know why I didn't think of it, but do you think we can? He goes, yes. What I'm thinking is giant video screens, multiple giant video screens, and live performances, live music, live or uh, live band, live singers, 360-degree surround sound, so all of the things I do in stereo um, in your head. imaging that yeah. happen in your head when you listen on earphones. Or on speakers. It, yeah. it, it all kind of works because there's always movement. The things spin around in your head and come from behind you. And and we're going to do that in the theater. Oh, <clears throat> so we've been working on it now uh, for about eight months. And we're doing new music. There's 12 pieces of music. We're calling it a, a musical comic book. That's and, good. And hmm. it's um, it has... A, all kinds of really inventive ideas. It's it's really exciting. It's going to be a major installation, though, isn't it? For for uh, a major investment. It is, investment and they're too. in the process of of looking at um, you know sixteen or eighteen new projectors and and like um, how really? many multiple screens and how to configure it to because it'll not, not only fill up the the main stage but to the left and the right of the stage out of your basic. Um, because you're looking at the stage, but yeah. it'll also be happening on the left and right. And we can do things with uh, visually where we can break screens into quadrants of, you know, eight screens yes, and having right. different things or use a lot of text humor because a lot of the a lot of my writing is is all like words you don't hear all the time, pep fortified optimism and, and things like what? Mm-hmm. But when you see it as well, we can do things with mm. pulsing visuals and It'd be and like sing-along. watching an opera and seeing the yeah, exactly. translation. Yeah. You know, yeah. Except they're like move from maybe left to right and go bop, 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 Oh, bop, nice. You know, and, yeah, it sounds a little bit like the sphere in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's what we're, I was thinking. We're yeah. thinking that, it, that that would be that ideal. That kind of with, scale you know, or scope. That scale in, would in be a, amazing. In, in a, a different like, kind but of this is this is designed to be an immersive experience <laughs> with yep. uh, sing-alongs and songs like Don't Forget the World is Ending and uh, other songs like oh, I'm eating fun. pizza for the Lord, and I'm eating pizza for the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a gospel song. It's Hold really the anchovies. Fabulous. You're a conceptual artist, and you're working all mediums. 
And it's really an interesting time for all of that because, like Phil said, the sphere, for example, we're, yeah. we're, we're entering this new era of the spatial mm -hmm. computer experience. Mm -hmm. And I did the demo at the Apple Store at the Vision Pro. Oh, yeah. And it really is a glimpse of the future. And it's interesting how someone who comes from audio gets it. It's the most flexible, most powerful medium because in order to comprehend it, you have to stimulate your visual cortex. You mm. have to, it's so by nature, it's interactive and you can really take people places because they're going with you. I mean, yeah. that's what Fire Sign that's did. What yeah. Fire Sign, that's what Fire Sign and, did. And it seems to be what you're doing now. You're even taking it a step further where you're actually creating visual uh, elements to this fa yeah, you're fantastic approach to, to audio. To sight. The whole thing, both content and execution are nonlinear in nature. And so you're hoping that this all boils down to an emotional experience that raises yeah. spirits. Yeah, well, that our whole goal is we want people leaving the theater exhausted and smiling and needing more, wanting to come back and do it again, because everything goes fast. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's yeah. it's um, that that whole um, you just let it wash over sense you of humor. It's like sounds individual sounds might be funny, but mm -hmm. you, there's no time to laugh because you're you're propelled forward in the story, and then the stories don't even last long, and then it changes into another story or it changes into a piece of music, and there's a sing along piece of music, and and um, all of these things are. Like the one I was telling you about, um, where you get people to hum and then whistle, and then uh, laugh, laugh to the melody, and who's got a kazoo? And then we're going to have a couple <laughs> dozen people with kazoos in the audience that'll be be playing kazoos <laughs> because it's so funny, it's so dumb. What fun! How do you account for the need to take a breath and ex digest a little bit before you consume more? Is it well, yeah, there is delayed laughter buildup. And, and that's okay. something we're concerned with. So we <laughs> will. There will be an intermission, yeah. and you will be able to get, you know, um, lubrication. Oh, yeah. And great. there's mental lubrication as well. Of sure. course, we'll be feeding you from the moment you enter the theater. Giggly the back up. <laughs> uh, Has it been underwritten by uh, how, who's underwriting it? No, it, because it's so complicated, as you know. Anything like this technically is complicated. Really, it's, it's technically too. complicated, and it is uh, hard to explain at the beginning. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. coming up with the idea that it is an uh, uh, a um, uh, a musical it, music, it is because yeah. there's twelve pieces essence, of music. Right. And, uh, but it isn't a typical, it isn't My Fair Lady, it isn't like right. uh, anything you've ever seen before. And it incorporates giant screens with a lot of visual, with, with all of the characters mm. and everything have been created, and I created all of them mm. uh, using things that I designed myself or used artificial intelligence, AI art. And the mm. characters are fantastic. Mm. They look real, but real as if designed by Mad Magazine. So you're, so you're saying that the, this is not the live component. These characters will be projected on, They'll be on the screen, and the there'll screen. be animations and found footage and text humor and wow. like <clears throat> kind of an assault of imagery that goes along with these fast-moving stories performed live by voice actors on stage. Ooh, wow, backed wonderful. up by, you know, a I smell band a job. of trombones and, hu <laughs> and tubas and... And, um, and and percussion and uh, it's really, a circus. It you're, kind you're, of is a circus. You're, you're, yeah. Yep. It's so it, that, that feeling doesn't. Wow. It? <clears throat> and Brian Eno, the musician, mm -hmm. is uh, has a documentary that was at Sundance. It features him. The way they're touting this production, when you see it, is that no showing is the same. Mm -hmm. It 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 moves. It's more amorphous. The story changes order and stuff. So every showing of this documentary. Is different. Oh, nice. You know, nice. I mean, it seems like we're prepared. How do they do that? Well, I would imagine. How do they do that? How do they do that? I, I, I don't know the details, <laughs> but that. I would imagine it's a computer, <laughs> uh, computer generated, it's a computer uh, based uh, exhibition, and that the the program can fluctuate and it's it's timeline. Yeah, these are well, experimenting these with, with new te new technologies. Yeah, like the Van Gogh exhibit. Uh, oh uh, yes, and that was immersive, but it, it doesn't tell a story. Right, That's and right. we are all story based human beings we yeah. like stories and we Sit want around resolve, the old fire. And we want surprises and all of our stories all have surprise endings so they're they're little twists of fate and some of them are ongoing like series like <clears throat> the adventures of guy good and gabby a western where guy and gabby are heading across the desert hoping to cut a, cut you know stop the gloom before it hits the big cities and hmm. suddenly they're hmm. surrounded by screams and the screams are why me why me why me and they've got guns 
and they are and they are the wimies. They're victims who look for someone to blame and go mad. They're zombies. I with see that guns. on the news every night. What, what neighborhood do you live in? <laughs> Wait a minute. And they're screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Run, for the love of God, run. <laughs> hey, Biff, bitch in house, catch and raise. And there she was, Coco. He quickly flexed his six-pack and smiled back. How could he forget the barista from Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf in Tarzana and that fling in the restroom beneath the hot breath of the hand dryer? I knew I'd find you. Love the billabong board shorts. You look so hot. Take a walk. He gazed at her cat eye, Maui Jim Pua Kenikeni shades, ample bosom and blonde hair wafting in the wind, and flinched. He looked back at the house, lucky that Piper, the love of his life, always slept late. He had to get Coco out of here. He jumped off the deck. <laughs> Dude, I'm so Sick, rad move. Oh, you look so good. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So, uh, what's up? I knew you and me were inevitable, Biff, when you ordered that triple shot low fat latte, hint of vanilla, one Splenda, and it added up to 666. I freaked. But when I did the life path and destiny on it, I realized that the root number was 6 plus 6 plus 6, or 18, and 1 plus 8 is 9. Look, you're a beautiful woman, but I have a girlfriend. I and... did the I Ching on us. It said 9 in the second place means perseverance brings good. Good fortune. So I will persevere all over you, Biff. Oh, oh what's your? Give me your, your number, yes. quick. And where do you see the, the image of her? She's so gorgeous. <laughs> but Piper looks like kind of which is played by my daughter Amber. Ah. Um, but who looks like Beyonce? But this girl looks like a Beyonce kind of character. She's she's so beautiful Bouncy. and so successful. She only has one name. Mm. Coco. That's Piper. the thing. No, Coco is the, the barista from oh, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf in Tarzana. <laughs> all right, that's right. Keep up, Phil. Keep up. It's I'm, very difficult. I'm trying. Very difficult. Know, You're listening to, to Phil and Ted's Sexy Boomer Show. Our special guest, Shadow Stevens, is here. This mm. comes from your roots. I mean, you have obviously always have had this. My first passion was drawing, and my mother encouraged me. And, ah. I, and so I, I did it really well, and she went, oh, my God, you are so talented. So I was obsessed. And then when I was eight years old, my dad bought a tape recorder, and I learned how to tell stories in the tape recorder by recording a little thing, pushing pause in record, adding a sound or, or a music piece, and then stopping it again and then telling more of the story. And it was I obsessed. I did production. something similar you did? to yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yes. I, uh, I bought sound effects records, <clears throat> which were on 78s, my oh, right, right. from a uh, major sound effects, it was called. I found it in like the phone book or something. And I went up to the fourth floor in this old office building. And there was this, all of these records categorized, mm. you know, car crashes and wars and, and water and falls. It was and magic. Things. Yeah. It, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, I, mean, yeah. I used to search out sound effect records, Sam Goody's in New York. And mm. you go to the big stores in, in the city and and they would have that big they of a, had a catalog, section, and yeah. they have a sound yeah. effect section. To me, that was like I finding know. gold. It was, it was and I think really it's funny how we all exciting. went through that. I was giving a given a reel to reel tape recorder when I was about eight, nine years old, and I have the first tape from that really? Christmas morning. And then immediately, I went up and started playing radio station with it. And it seems like we all did. Yeah, mm -hmm. isn't it interesting that we're you know I'm very visually oriented. I always when I build audio, I always have a, a, a image a, in a, your head. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, and I and I like not being confined by picture. I've done some movies, and I, I appreciate that. But I always found that radio was by far the most. Expressive, uh, expressive, medium. and fastest and cheapest and economical medium mm -hmm. to tell and the, stories, and the most involving. You could involve people. Here you are, a visual person from the get go, but you found your footing mm -hmm. in radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, radio just became because you know after I built my little radio station in my house, and then it was discovered on a local station, and they put me on the air as the world's youngest disc jockey. And I was eleven, so I was doing it. There I was in the big time. Yeah, I was in a real. Wow. Did you have that voice at age eleven? No. 
Really? No, no in fact, <laughs> but even in college, I was terrible. I could play you stuff you would laugh <laughs> really? out loud. It was so bad. I was trying too hard. I've always been a victim of my own enthusiasm. You know, so I, my greatest asset is <laughs> what I a have nice enthusiasm. way to put it. <laughs> no, but it's true. It is true. It's like what I lack in in uh, in intelligence. I make up for with passion, and I'll just try. And I will show up early, and I'll stay late because i am got to do it. And so and you're it was, probably I, was, learning. I was an art major in college for oh. three years, and oh. I wanted to be an illustrator. And But I was putting myself through college with radio. So mm-hmm. then it, in my fourth year, I thought, I don't know if I'm going to make money as an artist, and I seem to be doing okay in radio. I had to focus on uh-huh. radio. And so I went to the University of Arizona for two years, and that was majoring in drama and journalism. So I'd learn how to write uh-huh. and learn how to perform. And then radio took off. I went to Boston for a year and got real successful. And then I came to L.A. and I've been here ever since. You were the number one rated personality at WRKO in Boston. Yeah, well, the whole station was huge. It was 33% of the audience, 12 and over, listened to WRKO. And I was among a great team. And they actually taught me how to be a professional in the big time. That's where you learned. That's where I really learned. I always found radio to be sort of a safe space, too, because you could go on the air and really do anything, especially if you were at a Pacifica station. And and then Uh, no matter how ridiculous and how far out on a limb you were willing to go to figure things out. You could always walk out of that building. No one knew who you were. Yeah, especially right. if you were doing well, that's also as a that's a that's um, a curse and a blessing because <laughs> yes. I knew a lot of radio people who got really entitled and really full of themselves and stopped trying and stopped working hard because they'd arrived and you know, everybody mm-hmm. loves me and I know how to do this. I'm number one, three to seven on Y ninety two. It's like oh, yeah, you're scary. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah like, but you're what? Per- but they're performing as DJs. This is a whole other thing we're talking about. This is performance art. Yeah, when you're when you're your storytelling it's a whole different deal when, yeah. you're, when you're acting and, and having to write scripts and things so how did this fit how did this jibe with um your history here in town because i think people should know who've been around long enough to understand what your impact on radio in la was uh in those halcyon days of fm with k-rock and uh which was just an incredible station are you listening then. boomers yeah mm-hmm. some of so, you may remember what was the opportunity in your mind when you did all these breakthrough crazy things on the radio here well it started i was going i was i was at khj in los angeles the biggest station on the west coast one of the biggest in the country in history it was what uh, tarantino put in his movie once upon a time in hollywood oh, yeah. that's so, all khj that well, was where i was and what what time. year was this where this that is... was like uh 1970 okay early 70s right and i was also put on television as steve allen's sidekick and his announcer i was the ed mcmahon i of didn't steve allen. know that i used to watch steve allen all the time that was I, you this is like well i was in one of his uh, one of the iterations of the many steve <laughs> allen um television shows what a genius and so i i um I, at KHJ, they wouldn't promote me because they said, we don't know whether you want to be in television or radio. Uh-huh. I went, are you insane? Are you a dancer who sings like, and acts, like, or are you an actor who sings and They promote each other. We're like, what are you talking right. what about? What are you talking about? And they wouldn't, and I said, don't give me a raise. Just promise me that I'll get the next promotion, and um, and fine. And they wouldn't put it in a contract, so I quit. Was this an AM station? It was an AM station. You were very brave about that. In your history, you quit a lot of times, didn't you? Every time. (laughs) But, you know, (laughs) I'm a man of principles. I just said, look, I am not going to base my life on your whims. You know, I I tell you I'll be here, and if you can't give me that any kind of guarantee, why am I I here? You know, it's funny. That's something we all three have in common, too. Really about I me? Mean, that's what the Freedom of Firestone Theater was about. That mm-hmm. nobody telling us what to do. Ted has also expressed that so many times. That's why. That's why you found comedy. Yeah, isn't it? So that you could be the the jester in the middle of all mm-hmm. this this seriousness. Well, you know, as, as fate would have it, it, it was uh, I quit. And then I was almost immediately hired by KRLA, which was their main competition. And I went there, and then I was there, and I was happy. I was going to Art Center School at night, Mm -hmm. and I was happy uh, being in art. And all of a sudden, and I said, you know, we're not playing good. We're playing the same music as KHJ. We should be playing album music. Mm -hmm. It's what everybody is listening to. And I did all this research, went to Billboard magazine, went in to the general manager. I said, we should be playing this music. Here's why. And he fired the program director and made me program director. I was 24. <laughs> wow. I was like, I had to quit Art Center. I was like, I've got to figure out what works. Uh-huh. And and what worked was figuring out what would what is good music. 
and how do you play it and make it compelling? And then it was hiring the greatest people I knew. B. Mitchell Reed, Brother John Radgren, wow. the voice of God. All of these people that I hired were all amazing. And then we went on the air and, and did radio theater. It was launched with, it was called Phase Two. And it was, I wrote and produced 50 jingles and, and wove, the, wove them into a storyline that was everything you could ever want and more, KRLA. It was rock with a grin. And it was, uh, and then we did, uh, we did wonderful contests. KHJ came on the air and, and did the, the Jesus Christ Superstar Contest. And I thought, that's almost sacrilegious. Like, good God. Yeah. <laughs> so good I, God I put indeed. up the great KRLA Soup or Star Contest. Seven <laughs> stars are floating in seven kinds of soup. Name the star and the soup they're in and win $10,000 in cash. And so every hour somebody was trying <laughs> and it would be, and the, and the sound bed was, you'll love this, was Hosanna Superstar, blah, 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 blah. Hosanna Super. And they go, uh, Johnny Carson, bean and bacon. <laughs> it was the funniest contest in history. Everybody listened, the whole, the whole city was listening and we beat KHJ. So then, oh. and you'll love this as radio um, uh, history, um, management decided that they knew better and what we needed to do was this, 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 and this. And I knew that it would fail and I knew I'd be blamed and so I quit. Hmm. So just put me on the air as a personality, I'm going to go back to art center school. And, and so the new guy comes in and I'm doing what he wants and I don't care. It's like, fine, I like being on the radio. And then he calls me in one day and he says, I got to let you go. And I laughed. I went, That's good. I had good ratings. <laughs> And he goes, no, I'm serious. You're always walking around here smiling. I know you're cynical about what we're doing, and I can't put up with that. You're wow. kidding. Are you insane? Well, like, what know. is wrong with you? And I talked to him for two hours, and he stuck with it. So then I go into the <sighs> accountant who glares at me. He looks at me across his desk, and he says, I hope you go out and spend this money in the next two weeks, and then you don't know where your next penny is coming from. Maybe you'll come to the meaning of life. Really? What, what's the meaning of life, Don? He goes, management is God. I'm like, what? <laughs> management? He goes, it's true. And he banged his finger. I told the story the yeah. same way all the time. He banged his finger on the desk. They put the food in your mouth, thump. The roof over your head, thump. Management, thump, is thump. God, thump. Went, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> like, I've got to go now. <laughs> well, there's no, nothing quite like the level of management on, uh, on radio. I'm telling you, it, yeah. it, I mean, it's inherent. It's something about the invisibility of radio that, that ah, seems to true. give people a strong sense of entitlement. Well, and it's aloofness. easier to fire somebody who's just a voice, isn't it? It's just a voice. You know, what's yeah. interesting, though, it, statistically, it, it, it appears as though young folks are discovering radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but is radio radio now, or is it uh, the uh, you're listening to your device? See? And it's also, you know, the radio radio. And, and that's the nice thing about podcasts and, mm -hmm. and the freedom that modern technology has given us people, because you have a chance to do something original mm -hmm. if you just put in the time. And it's all about, as you know, it's all in the writing and the ideas and the production Absolutely. and the, the attention to detail. And people have a chance to do that now where it wasn't. When we were growing up, it was like Im impossible. That's right. You got a studio in your hand. People are making movies. But the collective movies. experience of radio, I think, has started sinking in again. Because when you were mm -hmm. having the great days, the bright days of, of uh, doing something totally cool and Reaching Popular people. And people. It was a happening. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. I can tell you an experience. Uh, I went down with my friend Bill Cates to get my hair cut in Huntington Beach at the Beachcombers. Don't ask. And on the way back, we ran into that thunderstorm mm. that nobody expected. And we were listening to the Tim Conway show on KFI, and he was talking about it. Mm. <laughs> it was so, he said, I know it's, it's out in the Glendale now, and it's moving towards it. And, and Bill was saying, this is what I love about radio. Yeah, it's yeah, immediate, yeah. and we're all experiencing it. Mm -hmm. And and local radio talks about the experience. And it's designed for localism. Yeah. Until it was homogenized by consultants. Yeah, and and corporations owning and, yeah. and taking out the the competition. Competition destroyed radio. 
Yeah. It's like um, mm. if I own everything and then I, it's making my general manager in charge of five stations and a program director in charge of three and, you know, people voice do, bo- doing voices for between the music. And mm-hmm. it's like, this is not Well, even... listen, in, in the Firestone Record uh, Radio Now, where we had the Starland vocal band sing, if the records weren't free, we'd be all news. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Fear Nature. Do you have an appointment? Uh, no, I... Uh, that does not matter. Nothing does. Yeah, well, I'd like to look on the upside. So, this is a philosophy store. Philosophy? Or? He thinks we sell philosophy? Nine. Here are some paper booties. Uh, paper... Booties to cover your shoes so you won't track in the dirt from wherever you come from. You know, we have booties in Germany. Only us are better. Us are booties. Oh, hey, buddy. He's not a buddy. He's a schnauzer. Okay, he's got a name? Schopenhauer. A oh, good little Schopenhauer. Good boy. He's not a good boy. He's a dog in a life of drudgery, on his hands and knees, lapping kibble from a dirty bowl. I love that piece. Oh, gosh, that's funny. I love that funny. piece, too. And, and we did this thing about, because Schopenhauer is maybe the most depressing man that ever lived and yeah. hilariously depressing and so I, and i and i and i and i was reading all of these amazing quotes from him and then we wrote one that was it is all humdrum and ho-hum life is vapid filled with grunt work and struggle we are an accidental birth in the flux of becoming perishable <laughs> oh. it's even better That's in true, german Schopenhauer. <laughs> Maybe it's sardonic, but there, you can always find humor in anything. Yeah. And I've got a lot of friends that are... If you're looking for it. Well, they're freaking out about this election. It's horrifying and really mm. hilarious. It's really hard hilarious. To look away. Really hilarious. Very funny. That thing that happened in the Academy Awards, when he tweeted that, it was perfectly yeah. written as a joke. And everyone in the audience, including me, thought it was a joke. Yes. And I then we too. look it up and go, oh, my yeah. God, it's real. Yeah. Because and he he has he, I, he has a he has a, a what's the word a vindictive thing he has a thing against uh, uh, everything a grudge <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No. everything that isn't him cases oh, yeah. and most importantly for humor his mental decompensation is mm, rapid yeah. and truly hilarious really hilarious and it's just like folks sit back enjoy because it was, it was you, actually, you know it's here it's whether you want to enjoy it or not it's yeah. here it was highlighted today uh, during the hearings that I was listening to this morning about uh, the uh, Biden and Trump's misuse of confidential material and one of the uh, Democratic uh, female senators I guess Senator or Representative, probably Senator, played uh, clips, video clips of all of Trump's mis malapropisms oh, and great. lapses of language. Oh, yeah. Yes. They're hilarious. They're hilarious. Oh, you know? my. Obviously, what you're doing is relevant to this disconnect that's going on. Everything I'm doing is relevant to the mind. Um, it, it, the whole thing is an allegory. Mind health? And, uh, mind health and, and the way you look at things. Not and mind nurturing. comp. No, no, mein no, Elf. not that. Not mein Kampf, mein Elf. <laughs> it's not Schopenhauer. Love mine, hated Kampf. <laughs> no, it is nurturing, you know, what's right and being grateful for everything that's beautiful in your life and thinking about it instead of letting the mind be predisposed to being afraid and to go down the wormhole into despair, weakness, fear, sickness, and death. Now, you're a no. meditative man, too. Now, yeah, how, did you, how did you find that, that inner peace and that, that uh, place to be in yourself, in your spirit? Um, well, I started, you know, I, I was initially uh, introduced to transcendental meditation because of the Beatles. And I thought, mm-hmm. that sounds good for me. And then I learned and I had the experience of a transcendental state and really liked it. So I did it for a number of years. Then I wanted something more specific and i learned about vedanta and i was really drawn to vedanta and, and what uh, is vedanta vedanta is basically the oldest uh, spiritual uh, teachings on earth based on the vedas and and then it was self realization fellowship because yogananda basically mm-hmm. is exactly the same where they celebrate the harmony of religions mm-hmm. and not the dogma and not all of the uh, mythology right it's like here's what they all have in common in which common. is believing in an incomprehensible formless absolute and whatever you decide to call it the infinite what or or god or 
any you know, Shiva mm-hmm. or something. That which cannot be named. You, <laughs> that which yeah, cannot be talked. And, and, I, um, and I learned deeper kinds of meditation. So I, I've been meditating for 50 years. Probably. So now do you feel that, that uh, what you really are doing is uh, drawing God, <clears throat> the God within you or expressing the God within you out of you? I would like to think both. I, I think that it is the uh, the action of going in, of learning to meditate and focused meditation, not guided meditation, right. not hypnotherapy. Meditation with a goal, mm-hmm. and and it is um, focusing your mind on a singular thing that usually starts with the breath that incorporates mantras and visualizations and things. But what happens is you go into a deep sleep-like state in which, when you get really deep, you're body feels like the skin of a soap bubble and mm-hmm. and you are immersed in pure consciousness and pure awareness mm-hmm. and you realize that the deeper you go the deeper there is to merge into and that is not only um full of hope and full of living in possibilities but it is a place where you try to consciously connect with the source with with the creator mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and go show me what to do Yes. Show me what to right. do with every breath, with every beat of my heart, right. moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, waking and sleeping. I don't want any responsibility. Surrender. You know, consume me. Mm-hmm. You know, awaken me to your highest ideal. That's the only place I can be. I don't want powers. I, I just want to do something good. Yeah, so and by, you know, I mean, higher consciousness is the is is the only source of salvation, really. For, for I don't know how people live without for it. the earth. Honestly, consciousness. Don't. I don't. You're kind either. of reducing your awareness to energy. It's like we're a, a, a spark or a bubble of consciousness in an infinite sea of awareness, and what I want to do is merge with the light that lights the light behind the light that all there is. Of why, all that's there why is. your name Shadow. And that's a he walks with the light. That's you know, Rumi, Rumi said, we are not a drop in the ocean. We are the ocean in a drop. Nice. As the puma and lion tore apart a horse belly and the leopard and cheetah fought over a beef carcass, Gabriel licked the last flick of barbecue off his cheek, threw them another pig knuckle, and started to leave the lion enclosure. He hit the keyboard 477GRR, but instead of the mechanical whir of the gate unlocking, he hears... Weird. And he tries again. Oh, for God's sakes, 4777. Please dial 4-star star on the keypad to reset pit. You always hit zero. Good morning, my name is Octavia. How can I provide you with excellent service today? You can unlock this gate right now. The lions are going to finish their dinner in about two minutes. Certainly, please enter your pan on the keypad. Yeah, it's not working. That's why I called you. What's not working, the pan or the keypad? Could you just open the gate? Of course, please enter your pan on the keypad. It doesn't work. The keypad or the pan? The pan! I see. Would you like to reset your pan? I'd like you to get me out of here. Of course, please enter the most recent pan you remember on the keypad. The one that doesn't work? The keypad or the pan. The pan. Pin, I need you to unlock the gate. It sounds like you'd like to unlock the gate. I'm sorry, there have been too many attempts. You have been locked out. Technical support has been notified. They will arrive between 12 and 2 p.m. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Help me. Help me. Somebody's got to help me. <laughs> That's an Edie McClurg character. Who are these wonderful actors? Um, that, um, the... Um the the uh, the guy trying to get out is my writing partner Joshua Weinstein. He's and he's also the guy who did the German. The German you told he's, me that he's it, terrific. He's, brilliant, he's a great wonderful. voice actor and he's a, a really brilliant writer. And uh, J C Wendell, who was on Dave's World with me for four oh. years, is uh, an actress that that I love. She can do anything. Oh, that's wonderful. she's got one of those like you. She's got one of those those minds that can go. I can hear a dialect and I can copy it. Yeah. And what do you need? When I said nineteen forties, His Girl Friday, you know, newspaper yeah, bullpen, yeah. and she go and she ad libs in the character, and I was like, oh God, isn't that yeah, fun? Oh so, my oh, God, it's so what good. A- but hmm. great. Well, you've 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 got you've assembled an incredible cast. Your 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 stories are amazing and fun and uh, adventurous and meditative. You yeah, know. we do get into meditation. We, there's a thing in the middle of it. We go to um, the crown. Basically, we go to the outlook chamber, and it's um, and it's described as you know like with stained glass windows and so on, with the light coming from above, and sit and talk about 
whatever the topic of the episode is. My One of my favorites is Space, Chapter 16. Mm -hmm. If you go to Mental Radio, start with Chapter 16 because it's out there. It's Good. really <laughs> funny and okay. fast-moving. And it talks about, is the space, the infinite space that we can't begin to comprehend, is what's the, what's the space between our ears? What's the space between thoughts? Do we really know? And, is it, and, and what makes it really remarkable is that the fact that there is infinite out without, that there may be infinite within. That's right. And how do we tap go. into that infinite within? Here's a glimpse. And so we do a 90-second sample. I must say that this entire conversation has been a prime example of how you can be in two places at once when you're not anywhere anyway. at all. Nicely put. Shadow like Stevens, on this bus. thank you for coming <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah, sure thank you for coming back, <laughs> yeah, Shadow, Shadow, and, and being wonderful. with us again. Love you guys. What, wonderful. what a wonderful conversation. You're listening to Phil and Ted's Sexy Boomer Show. I'm Ted Bonnet. I'm Phil Proctor, and I'm God sexy. willing. I feel and, sexy for having been Sexy dinner. Shadow, right? Yeah. And, and uh, God willing, we'll be back again next oh, week. Oh, yeah. We'll but be we back. don't know exactly where. Ooh. Tune in Chill and out. find out. out.